Welcome to Be Still My Soul. Today is a very special edition. We are being joined by our beautiful sister, Marie Munoz, who is our CEO for Guadalupe Media. Welcome, Marie. Thanks for having and me, Colleen. You're welcome. And we have our other sisters with us today. Alva. Hi. Elisa, Marky. Hi. Anne Marie. And myself, Pauline Romero. Before we get started with our show, though, it is important for us to go into prayer to start our show so that we are guided by the Holy Spirit. So we now invite you to join us for our opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, we come to you today thankful and grateful for the gift of life, for the gift of hope, for the gift of faith, for courage, for love, and for all the blessings you bestow upon us. We thank you, dear Lord Jesus. We thank you for this show, for the opportunity for us to be here together as sisters in Christ, and for the, uh, the accessibility of the internet to be able to still record this show, even though we are not in our studios today. We thank you, dear Lord, and we ask you to send the Holy Spirit down to be with us now, to guide our words, guide our sharing, and give us that word, that reflection that you want us to share today. Oh, Holy Spirit, soul of our soul, we worship and adore you, enlighten and guide, strengthen and console us, tell us what we ought to do, and command us to do it. We promise to be submissive in everything you permit to happen to us. Only show us what is your will. Amen. The Unity Prayer. May our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Amen. The Family Prayer Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, in you we contemplate the splendor of true love. To you we turn with trust. Holy Family of Nazareth, grant that our families too may be places of communion and prayer authentic schools of the gospel and small domestic churches. Holy Family of Nazareth, may families never again experience violence, rejection, and division. May all who have been hurt or scandalized find ready comfort and healing. Holy Family of Nazareth, make us once more mindful of the sacredness and inviolability of the family and its beauty in God's plan. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, graciously hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our opening prayer. And we want to say thanks to Marie for being so accepting and so modern thinking that um, with the pandemic we're in, that she has been able to establish a means for us to still continue to do our show. And it's really nice and exciting because we're each in our own special area, whether it's our home or office, but we can still all participate in the show. So thank you, Marie, and we continue to support you in your endeavors to lead us and everyone at Guadalupe Media for continued progress and continued success with all that you do. Um, we are going to be looking at Sirach chapter 23 today and we now invite Alva to start with the reading. Thank you Pauline, thank you sisters. Um, Sirach chapter 23, Lord, Father and Master of my life, do not abandon me to their designs, do, do not let me fall because of them. Who will apply the lash to my thoughts? and to my mind the rod of discipline, that my failings may not be spread or the sins of my heart overlooked. 
Otherwise, my feelings may increase and my sins be multiplied. And I fall before my adversaries and my enemy rejoice over me. Lord, Father and God of my life, do not give me haughty eyes. Remove evil desire from my heart. Let neither gluttony nor lust overcome me. Do not give me up to shameless desires. Listen, my children, to instruction concerning the mouth. For whoever keeps it will not be ensnared. Through the lips the sinner is caught. By them the reveler and the arrogant are tipped off. Do not accustom your mouth to oaths or habitually utter the holy name. Just as a servant constantly under scrutiny will not be without bruises, so one who swears continually by the holy name will never remain free from sin. Those who swear many oaths heap up offenses and the scourge will never be far from their houses. If they swear in error, guilt is incurred. If they neglect their obligation, the sin is doubly great. If they swear without reason, they cannot be declared innocent, for their households will be filled with calamities. There are words comparable to death. May they never be heard in the inheritance of Jacob. To the devout, all such words are foreign. They do not wallow in sin. Do not accustom your mouth to coarse talk, for it involves sinful speech. Keep your mother and father in mind. When you sit among the mighty, lest you forget yourself in their presence and disgrace your upbringing, then you will wish you had never been born and will curse the day of your birth. Those accustomed to using abusive language will never acquire discipline as long as they live. Two types of people multiply sin, and a third draws down wrath. Burning passion is like a blazing fire, not to be quenched till it burns itself out. One on chase with his kindred never stops until fire breaks forth. The rake to whom all bread is sweet, and who is never through till he dies, and the man who dishonors his marriage bed, and says to himself, who can see me? Darkness surrounds me, walls hide me, no one sees me. Why should I fear to sin? Of the Most High, he is not mindful, fearing only the eyes of men. He does not understand that the eyes of the Lord, 10,000 times brighter than the sun, observe every step a man takes and peer into hidden corners. He who knows all things before they exist still knows them all after they are made. Such a man will be punished in the streets of the city when he least expects it he will be apprehended. In the same way, the woman who is unfaithful to her husband and gives him an heir by another man will be punished. First, she has disobeyed the law of the Almighty. Second, she has sinned against her husband. And third, she is tainted with adultery. For she has had children by another man. She will be taken before the assembly and questioned about her children. The children will not be able to take root. Their branches will not bear fruit. She will leave behind a cursed memory and her shame will never be blotted out. People who have seen her will know that nothing matters 
more than the fear of the Lord, and nothing is sweeter than fulfilling his command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We now invite you to go back and carefully read over Sirach chapter 23 again. We will take a break and we will do the same. And whilst we're reading, we'll also be praying and asking the Holy Spirit to come down and guide our words. When we return, we will share our personal reflections with you on Be Still, My Soul.
Welcome back to Be Still My Soul. We're looking at Surah chapter 23 today. And before we get started with our personal sharing, I just want to invite Anne to tell us a little bit about the new season of our show and how you can interact with us. Anne? I want to welcome all the viewers. So feel free to log in on Facebook and join us at the Guadalupe Media page. Scroll down until you see the live airing and you can join us and comment. We want you to chime in and do your own meditation during the break and read the scripture along and also share with us what the Holy Spirit has been revealing to you through the scriptures. And just for sharing, we're going to be giving you a free mug from Guadalupe Media. And we'd like to ask all the people who chimed in last week to please pass by the Guadalupe Media at the Divine Mercy Church on the Northern Highway and pick up your mugs from Miss Marie Munoz. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. And so we are looking at Surah chapter 23 today, or the wisdom of Ben Syrah. And as Ben calls him, we're going to talk about what Ben is sharing ben. today. <laughs> yes, um, I believe Alva is going to start first. Hi. Um, well, ladies, at the first verse um, in chapter 23, uh, where it says, Lord, Father, and Master, um, we can say that when we have the Lord with us, we have everything. We have a beautiful relationship. We cannot ask for a better relationship with the Lord, the Father, the Master, the one who knows everything, who does everything for us. Um, there are a few things that I know before we had shared. Um, especially the proper use of the tongue. The tongue is a very, very powerful thing. It can make us or it can break us. We have to be very careful how we use our tongue because when we talk bad or lash out on people, we can cause a lot of damage. And um, I always think, and I had shared it uh, in a previous show, that it's not what you say, it's how you say things. Because I can tell you, tell one of you ladies uh, something, maybe for me it's a compliment that I'm giving you, but you might take it the other way, the wrong way. So we have to be very careful as to how we control our tongue. And um, well, another verse that really caught, well, caught, my, caught my attention, keep your father and mother in mind when you're among the mighty. Never forget where you come from. Never forget who has always been there for you, who gave you life. And, and the Father, I would say, it's God as well. So we need to always, and there is the commandment, honor your mother and father. We need, especially if we have them around. Some of us do not have them around anymore, but all of you who have them around, cherish them. Because when they're not around, you would want to do what you did not do before. So always keep them in mind. And verse 15, those accustomed to using abusive language will never acquire discipline as long as they live. Abusive language can cause a lot of damage. Verbal abuse is, I think, one of the worst abuses that we can go through. It um, um, affects us mentally and emotionally. We feel sometimes when someone tells us degrading things, 
we feel the lowest of the lowest. And we are not to lean on our Lord, lean on our God, because whatever men or whatever man, I'm talking man and woman, say, there's nothing like what God has for you. Lean on God. Do not let man and woman tell you you're doing wrong or not. You be loyal, you have fear of the Lord, you will be going on the right path. So let's be very careful as to how we use our tongue. And well, the sins of the flesh, we need to be faithful to one another. Husbands and wives, be faithful to one another because that's what our society has been going through a lot. Adultery, many families have been broken because of adultery. And I'm not saying only males, even females. Let's, let's as once we make that commitment, that promise, let's keep doing it. And do not make promises in vain. Do not use the Lord's name in vain because that's not what God wants. So I basically, that's how, uh, what my, I have for sharing. Um, do not forget where you come from. Use your, control your tongue. And once you have fear of the Lord, you have nothing to worry about. You're very fortunate. You're blessed. Once, remember, once we have fear of the Lord. And that is my share for today. I don't know if any ladies wants, one, one of you wants to share something. Thank you, Alva. Thanks, Alva. Um, I could go next. Um, the one that I chose was verse 11. Those who swear many oaths heap up offenses and the scourge will never be far from their house. If they swear in error, guilt is incurred. And if they neglect their obligation, the sin is doubly great. If they swear without reason, they cannot be declared innocent for their household will be filled with calamities. Wow. You know, um, a lot of times um, I could remember growing up that I would have sworn, you know, and I could, I would even, for emphasis, just say loose things like, oh, um, I swear to God, or I swear this, or I swear on my mother's grave. I've heard all these things, you know, people say, and, and we don't realize, like, the gravity of the situation, um, and it's really giving a stern warning like to be very cautious about how you use words and there's another part of the bible that says like your yes be yes and your no be no so that you don't have to be using emphasis your word is enough and if you're a person of integrity and um you try to practice integrity you don't have to go above and beyond to get people to believe what you're saying I and mean, then you won't have to swear you know so i think the message for me that it's um reminding me like not even in casual talk you know should i be doing this because if i want to um carry the name of the lord as a christian i need to live by a better example and I need to, I need to set that example for my kids, you know, because they'll do what they see at home. And so I am very guilty of that. And this is something that I need to work on where um, I could try to let my, my um, track record speak for itself. When I say something, I live up to it so that I don't have to be swearing for emphasis in the future. So that's, that's my sharing. And this is something that um, I think God is talking to me personally in the scripture to try and improve in that area of my life. That's my sharing. Thank you, Anne. Tanisha? Thank you, Pauline. The Alva and Anne, you nail it right on the head. And I do believe 
every week when we read these scriptures, man reminds us just, the, just in the event that we forgot last week, he comes again and tells us in very colorful language what we ought to do. I want to go back just a bit in chapter 22. And by the way, you guys did an excellent job last night. And I, I do believe that the Holy Spirit spoke through you, Pauline, and, and Marky. The end of chapter two ends with a prayer. And I'd want our viewers to be reminded when Ben said, who will set a guard over my mouth? An effective seal on my lips. Ben is literally giving us warning what he'll say in chapter 23 and the chapter begins with a prayer and it's a prayer mostly a plea to God to help him because he's cognizant of his own mortal self he's cognizant that he is a sinner and he needs God's guidance in everything that he does and so the first six verses alludes to what we get in the gist of the chapter because it referenced in verse two, um, who would discipline him? Obviously those are, those are his parents besides God. And Alva, when you spoke of verse 14, certainly Ben deconstructs what he said in verse two. And he said with no uncertain terms that um, keep your father and mother in mind. Again, he goes on with the use of the tongue, and we have almost, I'd say, over seven verses that spoke about the proper use of the tongue. And he gave an intro introduction of that in verse three and four about the use of the tongue, and then he goes on and tells us more what he meant by that. And then he spoke about sins of the flesh and what we ought not to do. And all of us do that. All of us, not do that, but all of us know what are those sins. And he spoke about a third. And I went in the footnote and said, okay, besides um, fornication and adultery, and um, the, the third one would be incest. So those, again, he called out. And all of what he said this in this chapter reminds us of what was given to us in Exodus chapter 20. The most, I'd say the most important besides, well, certainly we shouldn't call the name of the Lord your God in vain, our God in vain. But the most important crooks here, and I've, I've been reminded constantly by my dear friend Pauline, and if you could echo that again, Pauline, when you say, um, I, I don't want to paraphrase, when that, that the, the family, the whole nation goes when, when a woman sins in yes, such a way a, such as adultery can you repeat a, please? yes when a man goes astray there goes a family but when a woman goes astray there goes an entire nation an entire nation thank you pauline and that is what he describes there between verses 23 to about 27 and what resonated in me in, in verse 26 is when he spoke of that accursed memory even though as sinners we might think even if it's not adultery we might think oh nobody saw us if it doesn't come to light but everything comes to light at some point and imagine that generational sin if you're familiar with the book and this is by no way a self-promotion i didn't write the book father you're supposed to speaks about generational sin and what occurs thereafter and the stigma and and he speaks about this accursed memory and that her disgrace will never be blotted out that is stern language that we should take mind to that we as our mortal selves not just as women but as men too because there are there are many verses for just the men to follow god's word and in keeping with that faith, it goes back to the very verse in verse 14 that Alva spoke about, about keeping your father and mother in mind when you sit among the mighty. Do you come home as a 20-year-old and say, oh, ma, I just, I just can't have adultery with a, a married man. Nobody gloats about that. But are we honoring our parents' memory? Are we doing anything for our generation or for our kids to come when we do that? 
are we are we walking in God's faith? No. Every action that we take, I think even if it comes to to not telling the full truth, if your boss tells you, okay, don't don't put this to the file because we'll do this under the table. All of those things that the enemy comes and invades our minds or space or space, those are the things we should ponder and say, would this be in accordance? Would, would, my, would my mom and dad be proud? Is this in accordance with God? And it takes a very, very strong Christian to walk the straight line because all of us at some point are put in this position where you're caught in between a rock and a hard place and you really have to choose what is good, what is in accordance to God and what would honor your father and your mother. We've been told that um, Paul... Paul's letter to the Ephesians um, in his epistle, and I'll just say a bit what he said about honoring his parents. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise that it may so well with you and you may live long in the land. This, that is from Ephesians chapter 6. So, if Paul could echo that in Ephesians all the way back in the New Testament, Ben said it, and Exodus gave us that from verse 20, we might as well do it and we better. That's my sharing. Thank you very um, Ladies, um, I just want to um, share something, add something to what um, Ben said about the light that no one's, and it's, it's stated here in verse 18 and 19. The man who dishonors his marriage bed says to himself who can see me darkness surrounds me walls hide me no one sees me who can stop me from sinning he's not mindful of the most high fearing only human eyes he does not realize that the eyes of the lord ten thousand times brighter than his son observe every step taken and peer into hidden corners we always have to remember that the lord sees knows everything before we act on it before during and after we act on it and sometimes we tend to forget that i just wanted to add to what um fen had mentioned thank you thank you very much Alva. now we're going to take a short break and when we return we will hear from marky marie and myself on Be Still My Soul. Welcome back to Be Still My Soul. Beautiful sharing ladies and feeling very peaceful right now as we enjoy our garden. And we'll now go to Marky for her sharing. On Be Still My Soul. Marky? Thank you, Pauline. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate all your sharings. Um, this chapter is very powerful and it hits home, and I think it hits home to many of us. Um, I will start off speaking to my Lord. Lord, Father, Master of my life, Permit me not to fall by them. Keep a lash to my thought. Allow my heart not to sin. Allow me not to fail. Lest I succumb to my foes. Lord, I cry out to you again, Father God of my life. Abandon me not into their control. Let not the flesh master me. May I not surrender to my faults. I say that prayer there, I broke it up, but this is truly a cry that I think many of us cry out to our Lord, those who know God, who journey with God. The fight and the struggle is real. 
many of us who walk with God, you know, you think we know it all, we, we walk with God and it's say, okay, you know, the fight is real. It's a harsh journey. And in a moment's time, we're knocked down to our feet. But if we're rooted in our God, then we know he can lift us up in our faults, not in our perfections, but in our faults. I love this part in seven. It says, give, give heed my children. My God claims me. He calls me his child. And he says, listen to my instructions. I will guide you. We hear the command. We, 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 well, not day in and day out, but we learn the commandments, but how easily we forget them. But many of times we become, it says here, enslaved and ensnared by the bad habits of our mouths. It says, verse 9, let not your mouth form the habit of swearing. And how many times we swear, whether we're angry or frustrated, out of joke. As Anne said before, you know, we say, oh my God, every minute, Jesus Christ. We say lots of things that we swear all the time. Um, but these are bad habits that we form over time. These are learned behaviors from friends maybe, things we get accustomed to. We see it on TV, it's the in thing. Hang out with our friends, we drink, we have a party. It's easy to swear, right? And what do we do? We neglect our obligations, our obligations to our God, our obligations to ourselves, to be worthy people, people that God created us to be. It says, for all such words are foreign to the devout. Who are devout people? The devout people are, I looked it up. It says devout, having or showing deep religious feelings or commitment. Totally committed to the cause or belief. That's us being dedicated or devoted, devoted, loyal, faithful to who? to our God. That's devout people. We as devout Catholics, you'd hear, we're practicing Catholics, practicing our faith, our love for Christ. And he claims us, give heed my children. And he teaches us through his examples as to how we should carry our life. It says, for all such words are foreign to the devout. It says, let not your mouth become used to coarse talk. For in it lies a sinful matter. It says, lest in their presence you commit a blunder and disgrace your upbringing. Whose presence? God's presence. Who's upbringing the way God brings us up when we get to know our God the example that he sets for us how he leads us it says a man who has the habit of abusive language will never mature in character as long as he lives who are we what is our character what is it that we want to become thing is, when we speak illy, it shows lack of respect and reverence for others and for God. It says, um, we need to learn how to be more creative in ways to express our emotions and our frustrations. That's where I fall short sometimes. 
in how I express my emotion and frustration. And we spoke about it last week as well. But he said, if you've developed the habit of using them, ask God and ask your friends to help you stop these bad habits. We do that in many ways. Venetia, I was supposed to share with you. Um, I'm so grateful of the every week you every day you send for the retreat. Oh. The of how to be a better person, a better wife, your marriage, bring over your marriage. Those are ways to help. Unbeknownst to you, I read that every day and it helps a great deal. It softened my heart a lot. Amen. Um, I get it from Alva all the time. Kind word. The love she extends. She's a selfless person. She gives all the time. Pauline, the group. Who needs prayers? You continuously ask the group, who needs prayers? You're continuously praying for everyone. These are ways we help each other. Because many a times we can become very hurt, beaten down, that our words become maybe... Um, one friend told me one time that my words are toxic, <laughs> venomous, <laughs> that comes from deep hurt. Does it make it right? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. What does it do for me? What does it do for others? And we spoke about it last week, about speaking life into yourself, how important that is, and speaking life into others as well. I've never, I've always said, what you see is what you get. The struggle is real. <laughs> it's hard. But if there's one thing I know, and what I know from here, is that I am a child of God. And my God loves me. My God is a forgiving God. And my God will guide me. Anne said it last week. It's up to you. To take the first step and that first step is to say I want and I want my God and I know that he's full of love and that he will guide me the right way as you've all shared it's right here in this passage him telling us what we need to do and how to do it it says that nothing is better than the fear of the Lord nothing more solid than to obey his commandment. Fear of the Lord means love of your Lord. Fear of the Lord is knowing that he's got you. And knowing that to obey him is all good. And he has his commandments set there. But it's up to you to want. To want to form good habits speaking life over yourself, speaking life over others. And that's my sharing. Marky, beautiful. Marie? This is such a sobering atmosphere. You know, even though we're online, we definitely still feel so strongly the presence of the Holy Spirit. The word says where two or three are gathered, there he is. And here he is with us, his daughters, this afternoon. And so as I read this chapter, I absolutely fell in love with Ben. The way he just addresses God, you know it's a sound relationship. He actually starts off with his exhortation, oh Lord, my father and master of my life. 
And so he's our brother in that because we are here in this season doing all we can in our personal lives, behind the scenes, in our daily walk. As the ladies who have shared before me said, it's a struggle. The Muslims have a word that they said, jihad, it's a struggle, it's a fight. Our humanity always wants to take over. But because he is with us, we are able to make it. And so as I read um, and looked at this book and the writings of Ben Shira, I saw so many different topics. He spoke about wisdom, he speaks about friendship, he speaks about husbands, he speaks about wives. And we lean into his teachings because it's a part of the wisdom series of the Bible, the part of the Bible that tells us how to live, how to do this life, how to overcome the struggle. And I was so blessed when Ben shared just now about the book, The Healing of the Families. And she spoke about the work. That's the life's work of Father Joseph. And he teaches families how to overcome generational curses. But here Ben looks at the actual things that keep us in bondage. And there's a scripture that says, you know, pride, it's the root of all sin. And I used to wonder, what does that mean? Why would pride be the root of all sin? How could pride be the root of all sin? It doesn't make sense. But when we look at the writings of Ben, we see those who think that just because they're doing it in darkness, that they're getting away. Because they don't understand the law of sowing and reaping that what you sow, you will reap. And I wonder, I wonder how so many men, so many women throw away their families, throw it into the garbage because they don't understand. Even if no one sees you, you are sowing a, a seed that will grow. And if you don't believe me, if you haven't met Father Joseph, if you haven't read the book, The Healing of the Families, if you haven't spent time in God's word, just take a look at every generation of your family. You will see the same sin patterns being repeated. You don't have to believe me. Take a look at your very own family. And so I'm honored to be here, you know, where we are all in this struggle together. Like we're struggling to hold on because humanity grips all of us. None of us gets a free pass. All of us were born into this. You know, Ben says, we're accursed. So we have to face it. We have to face our weaknesses. We have to battle. We have to be in that fight. But God promises that he will never leave us. And the great thing about this fight is that I think Ben found it in the first, the very first verse of this book. He says, all wisdom comes from the Lord and with him it remains forever. So many of us, we find wisdom for only a time. We think, oh, I have the solution. I have the answer to this problem. I can do this on my own. And before very long, we fall in. And so tuning into God's wisdom, tuning into his way is what gives us longevity. It's what makes our lives sustainable. And Ben is calling us, he's showing us, this is the way. This is the way to preserve our families. He gives us a strong warning against adultery. Never mind if no one sees you. I love the quote that you shared, Pauline. You know, about the nation. That was so powerful. 
And so I want to exhort us that this is the way that we do struggle. I am thankful that there was a time, there was a, when I thought that I knew it all, that I could do this on my own. I was working and I was making my own money. And then the Dali house crumbled because it wasn't built on his foundation. And I'm thankful to God that he gave me a second chance to rebuild and that what is built now, I can say as a daughter of the king, it's built on the rock. And so the storms can come, you know, things, the wind can push the house, but it won't just keel over. You know, and one of the things that Ben, um, he exhorted us, he said, you know, pride even leads us to saying, you know, next week I will do this and next year I will do that. Or at Christmas time, we will travel to go on a cruise with our family, you know, and we don't recognize that we have no control over the future goes right back to pride again. And I want to show us this scripture from James 4, where it says, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this city or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? Do you not even know what will happen tomorrow? Isn't that the truth? Isn't that how we're living in this COVID era? That we don't know what will happen next week. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and we will do this or that. That is my final exhortion, that we exalt God in the midst of the season. We take down the prideful thoughts, we take down the prideful, arrogant behaviors that we may manifest and say, you know what? I have no control over this season. I have no control over my life. I don't even know if I'll be here tomorrow. And so if it is the Lord's will, then I shall plan. That's my sharing. Thank you, Marie. Very powerful and beautiful. A lot of things struck me in this um, chapter. One of the first things that really just jumped out at me immediately was verse two, where it says, who will deal out punishment to my thoughts and apply the discipline of wisdom to my heart? And I've been sharing that the word heart keeps coming at me over and over, over and over. The heart is where everything is. Everything that we feel, that we think, it's really coming from the heart. And then the concept of adultery. Really, we are an adulterous nation, an adulterous world right now. We have cheated on our Lord. We have been disobedient. We have broken the commandments. And God is saying, come back to me. Seek me with all your heart before it's too late. And, you know, the statement that you ladies have been referring to, it says, when a man goes astray, there goes a family. Or when a woman goes astray, there goes a nation. Because women are the heart. We carry the emotions. We carry the, the feelings of the family, right? And when we mess up in that way, it destroys not only a family, but a nation. Because we become like men and we are not called to be like men we are called to be women we are called to be feminine 
We are called to be merciful and forgiving and compassionate. And, you know, that, that just encompasses so much, right? But we have all cheated on our Lord. We have put other things in our hearts that have caused us to sin greatly because sin really begins in the heart. That's where sin begins, where we replace God with other things, idolatry. We're we are adoring people. We are adoring maybe our husbands or our wives, if, if it's men listening. We are adoring money and power. And when we do that and we replace the Lord, we will go into darkness. Um, but God is forgiving. And he does give us second chances to make things right. And so I was particularly struck too with the verses that Alva pointed out, verse 19. He fears the scrutiny of men and does not realize that the Lord's eyes are a thousand times brighter than the sun, that they watch the conduct of all men and penetrate into the most secret corners. All things were present to him before they were created, and so they will be after their end. And I pull us back, as I did last week, to Sirach chapter 17, that says that when God created us, verse 8, he put his own eye in our hearts. So wherever we are in our life or spirituality, that's how we are seeing God. And the more we begin to familiarize ourselves with the word of God, the more of the light we'll become. And I lead us to John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing came to be. Whatever has come to be found life in him. Life, which for human beings was also light. Light that shines in darkness, light that darkness could not overcome. So no matter what we have done, no matter how we have heard and what we place in our hearts when we were younger maybe, or even right now, if you replace those things of the world and put God in your heart, welcome God into your heart, you will be of the light. And you will shine God's light to others. And that's what this little group is all about. And each of us, we do still struggle. We still do have our shortcomings. This morning I woke up 3.30. So get on my two knees and beg God to forgive me because I got annoyed about something last night. And, and I feel like I didn't handle the situation very well. And... And I had to wake up early and ask God to forgive me. I have fallen short. Please help me. Put the right things in my heart. Show me where I am not going right and give me wisdom in my heart. To not fall to temptation when people aggravate me or when they do things to me that is not pleasing to me. Let me see from their side. Let me be more flexible. Let me be more accessible. Accepting. Let me just be the light. Let me learn to humble myself and let me learn to sometimes be quiet, just to not always have to be right, to just be quiet and be still. And so as we continue to look at Sirach, every week it's just amazing the wisdom that is coming, the wisdom that is being given to us, the word of God can never be wrong. And the more we share, the more we read the word of God, the more we spend time reflecting on the word of God. Because 
for anybody who goes to adoration, you're told that whilst you sit with the Holy Eucharist, read the Word of God and then spend some time reflecting on the Word of God. So it's not just talking to God, but letting God talk to you. So whenever you read the Word of God, and hopefully it's a daily routine that you have started to pick up, and if you haven't, then start it. It's a journey, you know. Listen to the Word of God. Read it. You can read it aloud, and then you read it quietly again, and let the Word just sink into your soul and your being, and pretty soon the eyes of God will really be in your heart, and you will begin to have the wisdom that Ben Sarah is calling us to have. So today's sharing was certainly very powerful again, and and um, that's amazing, you know, how God speaks to each of us differently, but still in the same light, light of God. And that we are no longer in bondage, ladies. We're free. We're free because we chose God, no matter what we did in the past. We are now Christians. We are now born again in the Word. And God wants us to share that with others, that we're no longer in bondage once we choose God's way. But that we are not perfect. And there will be days that we will be tempted. There are days that we're going to fall short. But God doesn't want us to shy away from him. He doesn't want us to stop praying. He wants us to come to him. The psalm says, come back to me with all your heart. Don't let fear keep us apart. So whenever we fall short, whenever we are tempted, call out to God. And those of us who strive to draw closer to the Lord will face more temptations. So we have to pray more. And regardless of what sometimes our own family members will say, you pray because you know what you need. But just don't push your prayers down anybody's throat. Because you can't win people over by force. You can't win people over by ramming your feelings down others' throat. You have to step back. And just say, Lord, you do the work. I will pray. You do the change. And so for anybody who is struggling, either you're in darkness or somebody that you love is in darkness, know that you can't change that person. Only the good Lord can change them. But you can help the Lord with his work by praying for that individual, for that loved one, or for yourself, by humbling yourself. And God will do all the rest. So that's my humble sharing. And um, I believe our time is up. But if anybody would like to just give a closing word or something that they would like to say that's burning on their hearts, please do. Well, I just want to say, um, um, continuing with what Marie said, we have all fallen short as well. And we thought we had it all. But we didn't have anything because we did not have the Lord. So it's it's a long road. We still have a lot to learn. And but we, as long as we keep on the right path, we will get there. Amen. Well, with that, we want to thank you for joining us today on our show. Be still, my soul. And you know, the Lord is good. If you notice, we're all um, from different locations, but looking the same <laughs> with our background. And we want to thank Anne and Marie for continuously helping us to grow technologically. And we thank the Lord ultimately for what he's doing for a little group. And look, you know, we are kind of in lockdown, but it's six of us today. God is so good. So thank you, Jesus. And we now ask that you join us for our closing prayer. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection from the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast and into hell Satan, Satan and all the evil spirits who wander throughout the world, 
Seeking, Seeking the ruin of soul. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back next week on Be Still My Soul with Sirach chapter 24. See you next week.